All right, everybody, welcome to Tesla today. So there's been some new news about batteries and about chips. We're going to talk about Samsung partnering with Tesla for the driving chips. We're going to talk about Redmond materials for recycling batteries. And um, the, the longevity of batteries in Tesla is surprisingly very good. So we have Brian White with us, joining us. Brian is a host of his own My Tesla Weekend channel on YouTube. You should check him out and join him there. He is very, very good about uh, very closely looking at both the vehicles, the production and SMS and the Gigafactories. That's one of his specialties. Welcome, Brian. Thank you for joining me. Great to be here, Herbert. A pleasure as always. So some of the news that came out was that Tesla is partnering with Samsung for autonomous driving chips. Uh, you know, we know that um, uh, they're working hard to really build these self-driving cars and it looks like that Samsung's been chosen to gather more of the advanced chips for the next generation EVs, it says here. So that's, uh, we know that um, he visited uh, South Korea recently, or he, at least, I don't know if he actually visited, he met with uh, the premier there. So this is uh, the report, is that Tesla's the, going to become the primary provider of the fifth generation hardware five of the chip. This advanced chip is expected to utilize a cutting edge four um, nanometer process, uh, you know, the, the previous uh, full self-driving chip was manufactured using Samsung's chips as well. So it makes sense that they are just uh, solidifying this. Both Samsung and TSMC are being considered strong contenders for this partnership. Actually, is it, so is that is that saying that they haven't signed a deal? I thought that that was the whole point. <clears throat> um, early well, in May, it's, it's yeah. that they're, yeah. Oh, so he met, it. yeah, I, I made a mistake. He didn't meet with the premier. He met with Samsung's chairman, Lee, uh, for the first time. Yeah. Tell me more about what, th- what you know about this. There's only so many world-class chip manufacturers. And uh, really, if it's not Samsung or Taiwan Semiconductor, who's it going to be? And it makes sense to definitely keep both of them in mind when looking at your options. And it uh, would be crazy to discount them entirely. Um, if the two offers, if the two bids for Hardware 5 are close, um, wouldn't you like an opportunity to get a little bit into the Korean market in a way that could lead to future gigafactories, to future expansion? Um, I don't see them having a need or interest to build a factory for vehicles in Taiwan, uh, but I could see them absolutely building batteries or vehicles in Korea. Uh, It's a strong contender for both of those. So uh, why Samsung? because they're a world-class company that makes absolutely fantastic chips. They are an absolute world leader in that regard. And, uh, and there's only a couple players anyway. Uh, if, any, if, if nothing else, it puts a little bit of pressure on uh, TSMC to remain competitive and aggressive with their pricing and strategies. And it would, it would potentially be helpful. Yeah, I, I actually misread this, mis, misread this. So Tesla may partner with Samsung, is what it says. Um, and then they, uh, it was reported though, I'm sorry, I'm trying to flip the page here, uh, by Business Korea is reportedly becoming Tesla's fifth generation. So maybe they leaked it, <laughs> like you're saying. <laughs> They're just leaking this maybe. information. Um, I do think that it's, <coughs> it's great though that, you know, one of the incredible benefits for Tesla is Elon. And Elon just meeting with every world leader, with every company leader out there. And so in May, he met with uh, Chairman Lee of Samsung. So they had already kind of established that relationship strong. I mean, it, it looks like it's the, you know, a big, strong uh, executive team from Tesla, a contingent coming in and a strong contingent from Samsung. This is a partnership and that's continuing to grow. So very likely this is going to happen. But uh One of the bigger concerns that I saw, uh, Chris from Dirty Tesla raised this on X recently, is if Hardware 5 is coming, does that mean I should wait for the delivery of my Cybertruck until Hardware 5 comes? Well, we were told Hardware 1 would be enough, and then 2, and so on. And um, the compute power uh, is, so far, not satisfied. The requirements remain uh, increasingly elusive to, to actually benchmark and that's because it's never Sorry. been done before and what, what are you saying i'm what confused don't. what you're saying you what did you just say that hardware why do we, four is why do not we need good uh, hardware three is not good enough for autopilot and well is it why do we have hardware five if hardware three is well, enough 
why do we have iPhone 22 versus iPhone 2? I mean, you know, every year you're going to continue to improve. Because I don't know how to make a phone call. That's true. That's a very good point. (laughs) And even still, even if hardware three is perfect, hardware five would do the same job with less power consumption. I I, I think this idea that I'm going to wait till hardware five, I think hardware three, they've shown it. Look, the the demo by Mm -hmm. Elon on Mm -hmm. Friday was hardware three on a Model S. And in fact, sure. you know, initially they were delaying uh, when they're going to do the full self-driving on uh, Harvard 4, but then they fast-tracked it because there's a lot of complaints. And so now it's available because it's different photons. Sure. It's much more precise resolution. Absolutely. It's going to be better. Hardware 4 is going to be better than Harvard 3. Harvard 5 is better than Harvard 4. But I don't know if you necessarily need to wait. And, and by the and way, also, yeah, you don't need to wait. Consider. Nobody knows. Sure. And hardware, and right. Right, right. And the improved hardware not only would consume less power, but it would get you more nines. It would improve the march of nines. It would take you from not. Yeah. And if if you can build a chip that uses less power, is ultimately cheaper to make, is and saves 10 lives a year, it's worth it. Of course, it's worth it. No, it's happening, but you have to wait a year or two. So one thing that's very surprising for everybody is this next news um, that they discovered or they did research and they showed that Tesla's battery longevity is not affected by frequent supercharging. Even Tesla says that you have to be careful about that. The battery degradation is not accelerated by frequent supercharging, which is what was previously thought based on this new extensive study. Uh, they thought that frequent DC fast charging is bad for batteries. Even you, Tesla used to warn against this. It says that um, its vehicles lose only about 12% out of our 200,000 miles. I tell you, this is one of those facts that we need to spread out there. Even my own sister uh, was asking me about this, and she doesn't believe me when I say, you know, there's been Model S's that has been around since 2012, <clears throat> 10 years. And you don't hear this issue of having to replace batteries. Uh, my Model 3 is not an issue. They don't believe it. Yet it's hard to believe because you're looking at the iPhones and you know that that battery degradation is pretty bad. So this new report from Recurrent had access to 12,500 Tesla vehicles in the U.S. Um, and they showed that there's little to no difference. That's crazy between frequent fast charging and rare fast charging. And they compared to fast charge at least 90% of the time to cars that fast charge less than 10% of the time. Um, and that's what they did. So no statistical yeah. difference. And so, mm-hmm. so we know that very early battery chemistry had, had issues and it wasn't, uh, maybe it was the manufacturing process. These were batteries that were designed to the, to the very high specifications of laptops and they were still disposable in a way. They were not meant to last 10 years in a laptop. Uh, That's why there's no liquid cooling. That's why thermal management is less uh, sophisticated in a laptop than it is in a vehicle. And what we're finding is that if the chemistry is right, it'll work. Now, I did a video where I interviewed someone who had had well over 300,000 miles on his Model S. And he was on his second battery. Uh, But that's because the first owner... Uh, had unlimited free supercharging and he would take it zero to a hundred, well, 2% to a hundred constantly in a, in a Uber type situation where he would just juice the heck out of it. And this isn't saying charge to, um, charge to a hundred, but it's saying that you can fast charge without it being an issue. Um, and most, most drivers will keep it within the 20 to 80 band, uh, for comfort and peace of mind and low and battery health. The valuable thing in this survey is that it's not a a report a self-reported survey because those tend to get overweighted by anecdotes. This is plug in, get, read the actual data kind of information where they can see what's actually literally happening in with metrics that are undeniable. And if you look at the graph, you'll see the battery degradation in both use cases is almost identical. So the good news is, yeah, for those who do not have access to slow charging at their home, at their office, at their apartment, people who are required to rely on public chargers, uh, you can do it and it will not destroy your car. Yeah. 
The other big bit of news uh, is Redwood Materials raised over a billion dollars uh, in addition to what they already have. So J.B. Strabo, who is one of the co-founders of Tesla, is now the founder of Redwood Materials. And J.B. has recently become a board member for Tesla. And uh, the whole company was set up for recycling of batteries. So if batteries do need to be recycled, um, then this is something that, and they do, they will be recycled. He actually had a great tweet out there that he, or he was uh, in a podcast and he was saying that every element, <laughs> electron, every uh, atom in the uh, batteries, uh, minerals can be reused a thousand, a million times. It doesn't degrade, not like oil. Once it's burned, it's gone. And so you could take a battery and just recycle it over and over and over and over again as much as you want. And so the uh, success and the potential for wedding materials is just tremendous. So they raised a billion dollars in Series D. It was led by Cold Goldman Sachs, Capricorn, T. Rowe Price, very similar um, investors to Tesla. And uh, and um, so they've raised now two mil two billion dollars, along with the additional two billion of uh, loan commitment from the Department of Energy. I'm glad that uh, the OEs. Uh, this is a great use of their loan. And um, Sawyer reported that uh, you know the comment was, "We will use our Series D funding to continue building our capacity, expanding the domestic battery supply chain, and allowing our customers to purchase battery materials made in the U.S. for the first time." So this is all very U.S. based. Um, kind of thing. And so um, IRA, I'm sure, is very much, uh, you know, uh, eligible for this, for the uh, incentives. Thoughts on this? And it'll certainly help. It'll certainly help. The You said something very valuable. You said it's not uh, when batteries need to be replaced or when, when batteries need to be recycled. Well, when do they? Uh, later than we thought. We're getting a lot more lifespan within the vehicles, and then we're getting a lot more second life outside the vehicles and things like stationary storage for off-grid applications. My cousin has a bunch of old batteries that I took out of my little neighborhood electric car powering his cabin uh, because they were no longer up to neighborhood automotive standards, but they're great for trickle charging from solar and using it overnight. And so the question was always, well, why aren't they recycling? And the first part of that answer was uh, because they didn't need to yet. There wasn't enough material available with which to recycle. And if they, if it was, if it was profitable, they'd do it. It is profitable. They are doing it. It's just taking a little time to come online because again, the batteries just aren't available. Now recycling, what he said about recycling basically infinitely is absolutely true. Recycling got a very strangely tarnished name by single-use plastics. Uh, the companies making them didn't want to stop making because a plastic bottle costs almost nothing to make. And if I can just put on it that, it that you should recycle it, it's not my problem anymore. You're the one polluting the world, not me. And plastics really aren't recyclable because plastics are complex, long-chain carbons. And when you make it the first time, it's great, when you try to recycle it, the carbon chain is different. It's shorter. It's been altered. You can't just melt down plastic and reuse it the same the second time. When I was in China, you would buy uh, luggage and you'd always make sure that this is first use plastic, not second use, because the second use stuff looked great, but it was brittle and it was not durable. And uh, if it had been left out in the sun for any amount of time at a market, you would already see it starting to fade. It was garbage. So plastics are not infinitely recyclable unless you wish to break them down into something like uh, like a brick. OK, you can make plastic bricks, but no one's making plastic bricks. So when it comes to lithium as an element, Elements are elemental. That's it. When it comes to copper, zinc, manganese, nickel, cobalt, all of those are things you can use. The only part of the battery that you can't recycle is the glue. <clears throat> yeah. And you don't need Thank to you, recycle Brian. the glue. That was great. Okay, wonderful. So we just talked about batteries, um, and it's all good, very good news about it as well. So batteries in Teslas don't degrade so well. Partnership with Samsung for the chips and then now red materials. Thank you, Brian. Follow Brian on his channel, My Tesla Weekend on YouTube. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. See you soon. Thank you. Hey there. Thank you for joining me. If you can, please consider supporting this channel so I can keep it going. It's a lot of work arranging all these amazing interviews. One of the easiest ways is just to click that join button and become a member of the channel. Thank you very much. Let's get brighter.